I'm uh, Yannick Cornet from the Technical University of Denmark and I'm a Sustainable Transport Appraisal Researcher. I'll present uh, a research project on giving future generations a voice on decision, trans transport decisions that affect them. And I'll show in this presentation how to construct a sustainability viewpoint in transport appraisal. The background is uh, on, uh, if we look at sustainable, trans sustainable transport appraisal methods, as a, perhaps this is a way to, e to explain the evolution. We have first generation conventional appraisal tools based on cost benefit analysis, which consists mostly of monetizing a set of impacts in time and space. Uh, and then, however, not everything that counts can be counted and there comes the uh, second generation of appraisal tools based on multi-criteria analysis, which allow to uh, assess more complex uh, impacts such as biodiversity loss, which cannot easily be quantified. Um, and, uh, th and then, based on that, comes the third generation, which is called multi-actor, multi-criteria analysis. And here the assumption shifts uh, on the idea that complex problems, such as uh, transport uh, uh, infrastructure decisions, there's maybe no right answer of whether one option is better than the other. And the best way to go about it is to actually ask different stakeholders to evaluate the, uh, the different impacts and to provide their different perspectives as input to, uh, uh, to decision makers for this decision. So the key to our approach is basically to also not only make explicit the various stakeholder uh, uh, opinions, judgments on, on what is a better uh, solution, but also to make explicit what, what would future generations would prefer for this specific decision. And so our method is uh, based on the real case of a high-speed rail infrastructure called HS2 project in the UK between London and Birmingham. And we also compare with two alternative options. Uh, one is uh, alternative alignment that follows uh, uh, a highway called M1. And the other alternative to building this high-speed rail is to upgrade the existing uh, rail line called the uh, West Coast Main Line. We apply the multi-actor, multi-criteria uh, analysis procedure and, and uh, adapt that method, that procedure to our needs. Uh, meaning we also develop a, a, a comprehensive list of uh, assessment criteria for this. And uh, we conducted structured interviews based on an online questionnaire. And after this, we assign respondents to different stakeholder groups. So here we have three groups. We have sustainability experts, uh, government transport professionals, and other transport professionals. And other transport professionals include people from industry or academia. Um, and finally, the key of our approach is to create, construct sustainability viewpoints. And here we apply a top-down approach based on sustainability principles and a, a bottom-up approach based on interviewing sustainability experts, our first group of respondents. First, we apply the, the standard multi-criteria analysis. Here we have the impact assessment results. It's not necessary to go through this. It's the result of the uh, assess assessments of each of the 28 criteria for each of the three options by the 33 people that were interviewed uh, as part of the project. But just to give an example, we have here, for example, rail capacity for passengers. We see that the high-speed HS2 project performs best compared to its alternatives in terms of capacity for passengers, which is uh, what the government was expecting as, and was wanting as well as a goal for the project. But on the other hand, if we look at biodiversity and nature, uh, that's where the HS2 project performs the least well. And in, in that case, the upgrade of the West Coast Main Line performs best. And that's normal to understand is because the new HS2 line is to run through protected natural areas. Um, so if we look at the sustainability viewpoints, how do we do to, to create them? Is uh, uh, we have the, uh, the expert-based approach where, we, where experts have been asked to weigh for this specific uh, case and with sustainability in mind, the 28 criteria, and we can see that they've given a high weight to accessibility, connectivity, and, and carbon impacts. So not necessarily just environmental impacts in terms of sustainability. However, uh, we can also apply a more top-down uh, programmatic approach, which is based on principles here, 
we used strong and weak sustainability, strong giving a higher weight to environmental impacts by default, and weak giving an equal weight to each of the three dimensions of economic, uh, environmental and social. So these are three, three different ways of approximating a future generation perspective. So the results that we get are interesting in the sense that the three perspectives here the three viewpoints uh, conclude that the upgrade of the existing main line is in, fact performed, is in fact the most preferred option in terms of uh, sustainability um, at different levels. From a strong sustainability perspective, it's 59%, it's but from sustainability experts, it's 46% uh, compared to the other options. Now, how does that compare with the uh, government transport professionals and other transport professionals, well, we see, as we expected, that the government is quite keen on building high-speed rail. However, those that were interviewed here did not have a clear preference between the two alignments of high-speed rail, while the other transport professionals really favoured the, the, the new alignment along the existing transport corridor, which is the M1 highway. Um, so the key takeaways of this research is, well, first of all, it's very important to cover uh, impacts broadly to have all the impacts in the in the assessment as much as possible to avoid some kind of omission bias. The structured interviews worked quite well with uh, with the stakeholders in the sense that it allowed them to to also reflect on 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 their preferences and to to engage in a kind of communicative uh, rationality. So it's it's not just about the final answer; it's also about the process of appraisal. Um, but the key point is really that sustainability viewpoints enable to give a kind of clarity on the competing views of different stakeholders, but also trying to approximate this, this future generation's perspective. And what we find out is that in terms of grouping the stakeholders and deciding who's a sustainability expert and who's not, training and experience matters a lot. And we also conclude in this paper that hiring more uh, sustainability experts or people with sustainability background in government for supporting these kind of uh, appraisals uh, would be quite important for the future. So for further research is really now if we start integrating and using this in appraisal, can it actually influence decision making in the end? And that's, that's something that we keep for uh, uh, next research. Thank you. Thank you.